Howdy folks, today we are going to start taking a look at GraphQL. Uh, GraphQL is an alternative to REST APIs. It's a much more flexible way of handling data and operations that is fairly popular, um, especially among startups, because it lets you get a lot of stuff done with uh, very little code and create a very flexible system, which a lot of startups are very happy about. So um, GraphQL, it's another way of building APIs. So normally you'd build REST APIs, you'd have your puts, your posts, your gets, your deletes. GraphQL can handle that, but in a more flexible manner. It's a little bit more work to set up on the server, but once you get used to it, um, it's it's fairly, fairly easy. Uh, it allows for very rapid construction of an API system that provides data and actions to the client. There is a very easy way that GraphQL services up what is available to the client, and then the client decides what data they want. This is very different from a RESTful API where the API determines what data to send back. Um, but GraphQL just has that automatically. Oops. So this is an example of a query as seen in the Apollo Sandbox. Please ignore the error on line two. This is when I opened the sandbox and pasted this query without actually having a server running. So it's just telling me, hey, it didn't know what that was. So you can see there's a query name, get thoughts. That is entirely up to you, whatever you want to call that. Um, whereas if you're doing a RESTful API, you'd have to call a specific API route that you predefined. GraphQL is more about data. On line two, you see thoughts, right? Thoughts is the type of data that we're fetching. And then the individual fields from three to six are the fields that we want. There could be more fields on that table, but maybe we just don't care about them. So we're not asking for them at this point. What this means is that you can tell the server specifically if you don't want some fields. Maybe some of fields are expensive to calculate. You just don't want them. Um, the client can provide extreme detail about what kind of response is desired. What this means is that if you are a backend engineer, you set up GraphQL, set all the data up, and you kind of forget about it. And then the client, if they need something to look a little different, they can just tell the system to do that, which is quite nice. Uh, multiple queries and mutations can be performed at the same time with some limitations. Um, but this is actually really useful, again, for the client, because let's say you want to get some thoughts, and then you decide maybe later you want to get some other object as well. Well, normally, if a RESTful API, you'd have to make two API calls which is not terrible, but in a GraphQL, you just add in another object to this query and it would start sending it down. So let's take a look at how we handle this. So the module that we're gonna need is called the Apollo server. And Apollo server is a popular method of handling the GraphQL stuff. So what we're gonna want is we're gonna want to install Apollo server. And so, install and I'm going to install a specific version. You're probably okay with installing a, a different version, but this is just the one that I know will work. So let's get that. Let's set that install. It's deprecated. You can see they say it's now found in the Apollo server package. If you want to look into that and utilize that, that's totally fine. It probably is not going to be super different from what we're already doing here. Um, oh, it's saying it needs GraphQL to be installed. Okay. So let's also install GraphQL, Oops. which makes sense, right? 15.3.0, because GraphQL is, is the thing that the server is actually utilizing, so it kind of makes sense that it's actually going to need it. All right, let's see if that goes through. All right, so we installed Apollo Server Express, and we also installed GraphQL. It does say an earlier, a later version is usable, but this version of Apollo Server, if you go up here, it says, um, GraphQL above 15.30 and below version 16 or above version 16 and below version 17. I just felt it was safer to go with this version. Maybe we'll upgrade it if we have problems. So now that we have GraphQL, similar to Mongo, we have to actually hook it into our Express server. Now I have an Express server here right now, very simple one. It has a very simple API, uh, which I'm going to get rid of. Now, the way this happens, now when we did Mongo, we did a bunch of other stuff, we use them as middleware on Express. GraphQL is a little different. GraphQL uses the Express as middleware on the GraphQL server, which is a little weird. But we'll talk through it. So the first thing we want to do, okay, we need to create type defs and resolvers. 
All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, from our server, we're going to create a new folder, schemas, and I'm going to create type defs .js and, oops, not another folder, and resolvers.js. Now, we're not going to go into resolvers this video. We'll do that in another video, but we need to have the file and kind of the empty structure just so that we know um, to TypeScript, or not TypeScript, GraphQL has something to work with. So let's fill out our resolvers file first because that's a simpler one. We're just going to create a new, new object and then we're going to export it. Um, so now for type defs, we're just going to, we're going to start off with um, an empty GQL. So what is GQL? Well, GQL is a special little wrapper function or helper that knows how to turn our specific string that we give it into actual type defs. Because unlike Mongo or SQLize or stuff like that, we're not actually going to have anything where we just put something and we say const new type equals new type and then put a bunch of stuff in here. It's not object based. It is string based. So what we're going to do equals G GQL. And then we're going to do a template string. And we're going to leave this blank for now, but we're going to come back to this later in the video and fill that in. Why do we do this as a string? Well, because that's how GraphQL is set up. It wants its type definitions to be in a certain format as a string. And they just determined that a string is easier than them building out a client library for every single language that needs to do GraphQL. But again, more on that later. Type defs. Okay. Now we're going to import those both into our index. Um, and let's see. Type defs equals require schema type defs resolvers require schemas resolvers. Now that we've got that, we can successfully create our server. So first we need to import the server. This is going to be the Apollo server. And we're going to import it from uh, Apollo Server Express. Makes sense, right? Now down here, we're going to say, okay, server equals new Apollo server. And what we're going to pass into it is an object, a config object that contains type defs and resolvers. So there is our server. We've created that new server. That doesn't do anything because now we need to actually hook it up to Express. Now, remember when we did our, our mongoose and our mongo, we actually took this app.listen, the same with SQLize, and wrapped that in a function. So I'm actually going to create a function, uh, and I'm going to call it start server. And then down here, and I'm going to call start server. That's just how it's set up. Um, so that, you know, we can kind of control this a little bit because it's a little bit complicated. So what we need to do now, we actually want this to also be an async function. The reason is because we're going to await something, <clears throat> which we can't do at the top level. Uh, so inside this, we are going to call server.start. And server.start returns a promise. So we could say server.start.then and all this stuff. What I actually want to do is I just want to await it because I don't actually care about the response code from this. I just want to care that the server starts up okay. Now here comes the interesting part. Normally we would say app.use server.middleware or something, right? That's how it worked with a bunch of other things that we've worked with, but that's not how GraphQL, that's not how Apollo is set up. Apollo is set up so that the express app is a middleware. So we're going to say server.apply middleware app. Notice that I'm putting an object here. So these are curly braces. Kind of interesting, huh? Now we're going to do um, something else after our app listens. We're going to say, hey, GraphQL is here. And then here's the GraphQL path. And that server.graphql path just indicates where our, um, where our server is listening on. All right. So let's, uh, let's start that up. Not that. Um, PM start. All right. Starts up my server with Nobmon. Ooh, and it crashed. Unexpected end of file. 
syntax error. So that's the GraphQL saying, hey, I, uh, I got something in this type defs I wasn't expecting to get. So looks like locations line three, column one, yeah. So looks like we do maybe need to actually have a type in here. So let's talk a little bit about types um, before we get our server started up. A type in GraphQL is basically, it's like a, it's almost kind of like a column definition in Mongo or in SQL. It starts off with the word type, and this is a keyword, not in SQL, mind. This is a keyword in GraphQL. So this, all everything inside these two backticks is GraphQL language. It's not JavaScript, it's not SQL, it's not HTML, it's GraphQL. We give the name of the type. So let's say I have user, okay? And then we put some parentheses around it. Then we actually have to define what is inside that type. So because we're working with Mongo here, we probably have an ID. And that is going to be, um, I think probably, oh yeah, there actually is a class we just say ID, okay? And notice there's no comma in between them. There's just another thing. So if I said um, username string and then maybe um, oops, age int, all right? And it still doesn't like that. So let's check out what's going on with this. Ah, so if we look up here, query root type must be provided. What that means, there's a special type of, there's two special types of, Mong, of GraphQL types you can have, right? This is a normal type, and these can nest as well. Um, but there's also the query type. And the query type, which is type query, this is a special type. And the special type indicates what queries are available on the server and what they return. So let's say I wanted to be able to return all my users. Well, that query, that data point would be called users and it will return an array of users. And I symbolize an array by putting the brackets like that. All right, and now you can see it starts up fine because it has a type and has some queries. So now that this is up, localhost 9090 GraphQL, let me grab that port. And now we're gonna bring up um, Apollo Studio. So Apollo is the server, the, the server client system that we're running. Apollo Studio can actually connect to your local GraphQL and let you debug stuff. So I'm gonna go and paste my URL in here. You see that lights up green. And if I go back to this root here, you can see I have types query. That query matches the type that I put here. So I'm going to have a single query type, and that's users. So if I go back up here and I look down here, I've got users, and it returns an array of user. If you want to drill into it more, you can. If you want to go back up and add it, you just click this plus, and you can see it auto-generates this query text over here. Now it's looking, it says, hey, you said you wanted users, but you need to tell me what fields you want. Remember in GraphQL, you can pick all the fields. I've told it that these three fields are all fields that are available. ID, username, and age. Let's say I only care about the ID and the username. I could say, okay, give me the ID, give me the username. I don't care about the age, I'm not gonna get it back. Now, if I run this, I don't have any, um, any resolvers actually set up. Um, to actually get this, you'd have to set this, and we'll do that a little later. But this is the first part. The way I, I kind of look at this is that your type def is a little bit like going to a restaurant and getting a menu. This tells you every single thing. Like this, uh, I'd, I'd look at it and say, okay, can I get a user? And can I get a user with an ID and a username? Okay, maybe I've got an email in here as well, right? I just add that in there. Uh, restart this. Oh, I guess it just auto reloaded. Um, and now if I go in here, you can see I have the email. I'm like, yeah, give me an email too. And uh, maybe I don't care about the ID. So this is much more flexible than a RESTful API because the RESTful API, it's hard coded to give you certain output. You can actually build RESTful systems that give you certain output based on your input, but that's a lot of work and you have to do it for every API. GraphQL just does it automatically. If I say, hey, yeah, give me the ID, my server doesn't need to change for that query at all. Maybe I decide I don't want the username, you know? 
Maybe I decide I don't want this query. I want a completely different query. Or maybe I just want the age, right? The ID and the age. So GraphQL is very, very flexible in this regard. And all I had to do to set that up was just define a type. And there's a couple other types that you can use in GraphQL here, but it is a little limited. Type user, type query that returns a user. And then I set up my um, server just like this, right? And now if I go to the sandbox, which you can just go to, um, I can set up and I can see all of these fields. If I add another field, well, it'll show up here and I can use it in my queries. So that is our intro to GraphQL and type defs. Um, next time we're going to look at resolvers and how those work. I hope this is interesting and I'll see you all next time.